bit about love practiced. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 through 40. Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 through 40. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. In the greatest command in Matthew chapter 22, Jesus tells us how and who we are to love. Our primary love is to be directed towards God, our Father and Creator. Jesus follows the who to love with how to love. This description of how to love envelops the completeness of your heart, your soul, and your mind. There is absolutely no area of our lives with which these three do not connect. Loving God involves every bit of our lives. In John chapter 15 and verse 14, Jesus says, If you love me, keep my commandments. Now, isn't it interesting that Jesus connects our love to our obedience? Love is not a state of being. Love is not something that you fall into by chance. Love is an action to be practiced. Love is a decision to submit. (coughs) It is also interesting that the word used for worship in the New Testament is proskuneo, which literally means to kiss towards. And that certainly sounds like an expression of love. When we love, we obey and worship. Likewise, as we realize the power of that love, it leads us to share it with others. This is the first and natural response to the second command that Jesus gives in the text. In verse 39, love thy neighbor as thyself. Service to others also is a natural outgrowth of a Christ-like love for people. Ultimately, Our hope is that this service would lead people to greater love (coughs) that that motivated it. Often lost in this great command to love is the permission to learn to love yourself. The, The verse 39 in chapter 22 says, love your neighbor as yourself. This loving yourself is not an ego driven arrogance, but rather a love of self that has experienced the amazing love and forgiveness of God. It is in experiencing this loving grace that we encounter the ability to love yourself and to share that love with others. Remember, to share your love with others is to share the Lord's word with them, because without the word, they will not have the opportunity to love like a Christian can love, and thus will not have the opportunity to share in our great reward. To love them as ourself, we must ensure that we give them the opportunity to be saved, as Jesus tells us in Matthew 28, 18 through 20. To have this beautiful love, we must first hear the word, Romans 10, 17. We must believe it with all of our heart, soul, and mind, John 8, 24. We must repent of our sins, Luke 13, 1 through 3. We must con- confess Jesus as Lord, Matthew 10, 32. We must be buried with Jesus in baptism, Acts 22, 16. And then we must live faithful unto death, 1 John 1, 6 and 7, and Revelation 2, 10. So if you have yet to follow any of these instructions, the waters of baptism are ready for you. Or if you need prayers of encouragement from the church, please come forward as we stand and sing.